Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for March the 6th, 2023. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. My name is Tim, and I am sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python that is designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. The development of CircuitPython is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel as well as the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically occurs on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific time, uh, except when that would coincide with a U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there is a link to a calendar that you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. Uh, we'll also send out uh, notifications about the upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive those notifications, just ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role over on Discord. There is a notes doc that accompanies the meeting and the recording. The notes document contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view only the parts that interest you most. Uh, the meeting tends to run 45 to 60 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. After each meeting, we'll post a link to the next uh, week's meeting's notes doc on the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages uh, to always find the uh, next upcoming notes doc for the meeting. Uh, if you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave your hug reports and status updates in that document, and we will read them for you uh, during the meeting. The uh, meeting structure, it's going to be held in five parts. The first part of the meeting is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of the Python on microcontrollers newsletter. Uh, the second part is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. That one's going to be a statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from what we're all up to. Uh, the third uh, part of the meeting and the first of our two round robins is the Hug Reports section. Uh, Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things that folks are doing. Take some time to recognize awesome folks in our community and beyond. Uh, the fourth part is status updates. That's the second of our two round robins. Uh, status updates is an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to. Take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been working on in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be working on uh, over the next week until the next meeting. The fifth and final part of the meeting is called In the Weeds. In the Weeds is an opportunity for more long-form discussions. Those discussions can come out of status updates or they can be identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. Um, and again, those topics are just listed down at the bottom of that uh, note stock. So that covers how the uh, meeting will go. And with that, we will get into some community news for the week. We'll take a timestamp there and there. First item in uh, community news this week is CircuitPython 8.1.0 beta 0 was released. Uh, there's a new unstable release of CircuitPython version 8.1.0 beta 0. Uh, there are links here to the Adafruit blog as well as release notes. And uh, I went ahead and threw in the uh, quick bulleted list of new changes um, since 8.00. Um, and those are uh, added support for animated GIFs using on disk GIF, uh, added uh, safemode.py for programmatic handling of safe mode, added support for seven color e ink displays. Uh, allow setting the pi stack size in settings.toml, adding uh, dither support to palette, and then uh, supporting array.extend with an iteratable. iteratable. Uh, so great stuff. And uh, as always, um, if anybody wants to give out, uh, give a tryout to uh, the newest version, 8.1.0 beta 0, uh, it's always great to have folks um, trying it out with your projects and things like that. And just uh, let us know on the Discord or on GitHub how it's going for you. Uh, next up is some new documentation for the Raspberry Pi Pico, uh, Pico W, and RP2040. The Raspberry Pi uh, have released a new set of documentation for the RP2040, uh, Pico, and Pico W. There are links here directly to the documentation itself, as well as some data sheets and a link to a post on the Adafruit blog uh, discussing that. Uh, a couple other items from the newsletter this week, sort of projects from around the web. Uh, first one here is uh, making of animated GIF floppies. Uh, our very own Ann B, uh, editor of the newsletter uh, where all of these items will appear. 
uh, has uh, created this project with an animated GIF uh, playing floppies, or I should say of a floppy playing animated GIFs rather. Uh, the editor has been kicking the tires on the new animated GIF support for CircuitPython 8.1.0 beta 0. Uh, taking the floppy with a display hardware, I loaded the beta and test GIF player, worked out of the gate. Uh, first was Max Headroom demo, initially posted that one to Twitter. Uh, about 10 different iterations were made with memes uh, and computer software startup screens and more. Likely when 8.1 is released uh, as stable, there will be a native root guide on using animated GIFs uh, we are uh, as we're still working out the subtle bugs and performance. A uh, huge shout out to CircuitPython community member Mark Kamas for adding the GIF capability. Uh, it was the top of Anne's CircuitPython 2023 uh, request list. So there are links here to uh, Twitter for the initial post, as well as Adafruit blog, and uh, link into the show and tell if you want to see a video of that in action. Uh, and rounding out the community news projects this week was uh, Project of the Week, a VT2040, uh, a MicroPython-based portable terminal. Uh, VT2040 VT is a portable serial terminal based on an RP2040 dev board with a Gherkin keyboard and an ILI 9488 uh, 480 by 320 LCD screen. The prototype gets about 18 hours out of three AA batteries and runs MicroPython. There's a link here to GitHub if you want to learn more or see some more uh, images or anything of that project, which definitely looks very neat. Uh, so these have all been entries from the newsletter. Uh, the CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter that's emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available on adafruitdaily.com. It highlights the latest uh, Python on hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or projects, uh, edit next week's draft on GitHub uh, and submit a pull request uh, with your changes. Uh, you could also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email over to cpnews at adafruit.com to submit ideas for the newsletter. So next up is going to be the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Uh, let me catch up here. So yeah, uh, just as a reminder, this one is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from what we're all up to. We'll talk about the project overall and then separately discuss the core, the libraries, and Blinka. Uh, so the overall report for this week, uh, we have had uh, across all CircuitPython repos, um, 34 pull requests merged by 19 authors. Uh, a couple of the names that uh, looked a little bit newer to me, so these folks might be uh, newer contributors or less frequent. Um, certainly possible that I missed some folks and apologize for that if so, but the uh, names that did look like newer folks to me were uh, Foxy82, uh, Ad Adelan, uh, let's see, Ad Let's see, at Alan Torre, uh, Startup Potec, and let's see, was there one more? Yeah, Jetta Han uh, as well. Those were the uh, usernames on GitHub of folks that, again, are perhaps uh, newer or less frequent contributors. So thank you to them, as well as uh, all of our more frequent uh, names that pop up um, from week to week. Uh, so that was our 19 authors. Uh, there were nine reviewers overall this week, so thank you to all of our reviewers. Of course, we would not be able to get new code in without our reviewers, um, so definitely really appreciate all of you. Uh, there were 19 issues closed by 10 people, uh, as well as 29 issues opened by 25 people. Uh, and with that, I will uh, pass it over to Scott, if you're available, to tell us about the core. Sure. Thanks for hosting, Tim. Uh, okay, for the core, the numbers are, uh, we had 14 pull requests merged from 11, or 11, 10 authors, I don't know why I said 11, um, Monday morning, hello. Uh, so thank you to all of our authors, um, nice to see a number of folks there, uh, TT Moby, Atlantor, Startup Potec, um, Hex that and McGowan are all relatively new names. Uh, we had five reviewers, so thank you to our reviewers. Uh, Gambler21 and The Kitty are infrequent reviewers, so thank you uh, for reviewing the core. We had 29 open pull requests. Um, a lot of those are drafts. Um, 
and uh, generally looking good besides uh, besides draft PRs. Again, we're still on two pages of PR, so I'd like I'd love to see us down to down to one. Um, we have seven closed issues uh, by four people and fifteen open by twelve people, so we're net up eight, which is quite a lot. Um, but again, I think this is a pretty normal time for us to be uh, higher issues wise because we just had a new stable release, major stable release. Um, so we have 634 open issues. Uh, you can check those out on the GitHub at github.com slash Adafruit slash CircuitPython slash issues. Uh, we have eight active milestones. We have uh, one issue for 0.8.0.x which is like the highest, most urgent ones, uh, things that we would actually do a new stable release to fix. Um, and then we have 12 open issues for 8.1, which is the next feature release. Um, and we now have a pre-release version of that as well, thanks to Dan. Um, and then we have 24 open issues for 9.0. So um, a number of issues in that category, and then 500 in the long-term category, which is the, uh, the category for things that we'd like to do at some point, but not sure when. Um, lastly, we have, uh, as of these numbers, uh, five issues not assigned to Milestone, which is uh, issues that just need to be triaged into one of those other Milestone buckets. And that's the state of the core. Alrighty. Thank you, Scott. Uh, next up will be the libraries. Uh, Katni is not with us today, so I'll read out the libraries for us and take a timestamp. Uh, across all of the CircuitPython library repos, we had 20 pull requests merged this week from 11 authors with six reviewers. Uh, so thank you to everyone who submitted code or reviewed on the library sides in the past week. Uh, of those pull requests, the oldest one merged this week was 71 days old. Uh, there were a couple others that were about a month or so, and then uh, the rest were kind of that, uh, you know, two weeks or less um, in the list there. Uh, so that is library stuff. Some uh, The rest of the stats down here, we had, uh, uh, or I should say remaining, there are 40 open pull requests, uh, with the oldest one being 888 days, the newest one being only two days. Uh, across the past week, we did have 12 issues closed by 7 people, with 10 uh, issues open by 10 people. That leaves us with 597 open issues across those library repos, as well, uh, or I should say, of those 597, there are 76 that are marked as good first issues. Um, for folks that are interested in getting involved, helping uh, to contribute, those good first issues are a great place to start. You can find those listed on circuitpython.org slash contributing. Um, on that page, there is a list of all the open pull, uh, open PRs. Uh, there's another tab on the page for issues, and if you click over to issues, you can then filter by uh, good first issues, which are the ones that have been identified as uh, good for folks that maybe don't have any prior experience or extensive um, you know, programming or coding knowledge. Um, there is a guide for contributing with Git and GitHub, so um, if you want to help get involved but you've never done that before, don't let that be the barrier. Um, uh, take a look at the guide as well as join us over on the Discord. There's always going to be folks around who are willing to help you out if you're wanting to get involved uh, contributing, and the libraries is a great place to do that. Um, in terms of the library uh, PyPy weekly download stats, uh, we had, uh, let's see here sure I get the commas right here. We had uh, 151,776 PyPI downloads for 308 total libraries. Uh, the top 10 list is listed here. Um, it is kind of interesting to see those ones change from week to week. I think it's usually mentioned the, the top few are pretty static. Uh, some of the ones that uh, poked up into the list this week that caught my eye were uh, LED animation as well as display text. Um, so take a look through the list there if you want to see some of those. Um, there were no new libraries in the last seven days, uh, and there is a list of updated libraries here in the notes document if you want to check those out. Uh, and that covers the library portion of the update. Uh, so I will uh, pass it over to Melissa, maybe? Nope, actually, I don't see Melissa. I will, uh, I will read off the Blinka section here as well. Uh, so Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for Raspberry Pi and other single board computers, as well as MicroPython. Um, in the Blinka repos this week, we had uh, zero pull requests merged, zero authors, and zero reviewers. 
There are five open pull requests across those uh, Blinko repos. Uh, there are, let's see, 96 open issues across those repos. Uh, and over the past week, Blinka has seen 14,600 PyPI downloads, as well as uh, 8,488 PyWheels downloads. Uh, and Blinka is currently supporting 101 different boards. Um, all right, so that wraps up our um, updates. Next up is the first of our two round robins, the Hug Report section. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start and then we'll go down the list of names as they appear in the notes doc to give everyone a chance to participate. If you're text only or missing the meeting, but you have Hug Reports in the notes document, then I'll read them off as we get to your turn in the list. Uh, so I will kick us off. Uh, this week I have Hug Reports for uh, Dan H for pointing me towards some examples in the core for handling background tasks, as well as uh, logic for checking whether you are interrupted by the like control C and the REPL and things like that. Uh, another hug report for Maker Melissa for the installer wizard functionality that's been added to circuitpython.org, uh, and a hug report for Mark Gambler for discussing, uh, I should say, for discussions around colors and uh, display I/O um, that he had with me. So thanks for that. Uh, and next up, I will pass it over to Dan. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks to MicroDev for continuing with um, various GitHub CI improvements. Some of these are refactoring just to make the code clearer. Some of them are kind of small speed ups, but as people say, when you're putting a backpack in, the ounces, it's the ounces, not the pounds sometimes. And each, each uh, improvement on the, um, the build time helps. And when there are a lot of those, it helps a lot. OK, thanks to uh, Gambler21 and Retired Wizard for testing a socket fix that I tried uh, recently. And thanks to Scott for pointing out the code problem which caused that socket fix problem. And that will probably go into 804. Uh, thanks to Jeff for figuring out uh, what was wrong with uh, the truncation that was happening to um, long delays for animated GIFs, and I put in a fix for that. And thanks to Gambler again for fixing long SPI writes on Atmel SAMD when they were more than 64K long, it would truncate them. So that's in the fix in the works also. OK, that's it. All right, thanks, Dan. Uh, next up is DJ Devin 3. Thank you. I have a hug for Naradoc for helping me troubleshoot why an unexpected Maker Feather S3 firmware wasn't working during last week's meeting. And I posted a picture of the wiring, and his keen eyes observed that it was not a UM Feather S3. It was an Adafruit Feather S3, and I didn't even notice even though I was holding it in my hand. So thank you, Naradoc, for your keen eyes. Uh, a hug to C. Grover for excellent audio-related advice uh, this week. Uh, thankfully, I didn't have to go with the transformer route and end up figuring out a different method, but your advice put me on the right track. Thank you to Kyoshi for the excellent feedback and ideas on the TR Cowboy version 1.2. He kept me updated throughout his entire build process, and he had ideas uh, that we were bouncing back and forth that I never even considered, which will be implemented in the next revision. Uh, your feedback was excellent and very much appreciated. A hug to Skur for getting his icy blue FPGA feather to do a thing in the real world. It's been a wonderful. It's been wonderful watching his progress uh, with FPGA stuff. To Lady Ada for the new launch of the IMX Metro 7 M7. Very excited to get my hands on one. And a hug to Jepler for the tiny UF2 Learn Guide, which will get everyone hopefully up and running with their new Metro M7s. Thank you. Oh, and a thank you to Foamy Guy for hosting the meeting. All right. Yep. Thank you, DJ Devin. Uh, next up is uh, David Glauda, who's not present, so I'll read. David has just a group hug this week. Uh, and following that, I will send it over to Jeff. Hello. Got to find my mute button. Uh, so I have a number of hugs this week. A uh, group hug. This community inspires me with their projects, as well as how kind we are to each other. Uh, hug to Liz for running show and tell last week. It was fun to be on. To Gambler, Mark, uh, Comas, and Anne for GIF.io and the very engaging project you've done with it already. Um, it's it's fun when the community you know loves what you do and 
yeah, it's it's great seeing that. Um, a hug to PT and Lamore for enabling me to do fun projects and always giving me more fun projects than I have uh, time for. And to Phil B, known as Paint Your Dragon, and Anne for very fruitful guide reviews. Uh, and that's what I got. All righty. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, next up is Jerry N. There's that button. Um, yeah, just a, a hug to, to Scott Tanute for uh, the Mangle 2 JS port and for patiently helping me get it up and running uh, with uh, the Glider and Blue Fruit Connect apps. It's been, been a lot of fun. All right. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, it's excellent to hear from you as well. Uh, next up is Jose David, who's text only, so I'll read. Uh, Jose has a hard report for Foxy82 for correcting a reference in the documentation for the HTTP server library. Uh, next up is Keith de EE, who's also text only. Uh, Keith has a hard report for Catney for a lovely conversation and advice at ahead of a presentation that I'll be giving this coming Saturday. Uh, next up is Mark Gambler, who is missing or late, uh, and I don't see him in here yet, so I'll read. Uh, Mark has a hug report for Dan, as well as Jeff, for documentation and answering questions from others about GIF support. Uh, and uh, rounding out the hug report section, I will send it over to Scott. All right. Um, first up, a hug to Isaac Ben for the AE AES documentation fixes. And also a hug report to you, Foamy Guy, for the many library reviews and improvements uh, that, that you do, including for my seven color display IC libraries that I just did. Um, it's, it's great to see you take the time to do a lot of testing and, and shepherding of uh, library reviews through. So thank you so much for that. Sure. Thank you, Scott. Uh, and that is going to do it for hug reports. So moving on to the next text section status updates status updates is our time to sync up on what we're doing i will start and then we'll go through the list alphabetically uh, or whatever order they appear in the notes doc uh, we'll give everyone a chance to participate when i call on you go ahead and take a couple of minutes talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you will be doing until the next meeting this is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on if a discussion becomes too much for status updates we can move it down to in the weeds so I will get us started for the status updates. Um, past week, I uh, reviewed the FrameBuff library PR that added support for bicolor LED matrices. Um, I didn't have that specific hardware with the, the bicolor LEDs, but I did test it on all the hardware I do have to check for regressions. Um, and I do actually have one of those bicolor matrices coming, so I'll get a chance to test that one out in the future. Um, I started uh, assessing the scope of example code changes for the new DisplayIO API. Uh, I have a note down in the weeds to talk about this as well. Um, as expected, kind of, I think there are uh, lots of changes out there, but um, by looking through the learn guides and the bundle examples, it looks like uh, the vast majority of them use kind of the same, uh, the same code and the same syntax and everything. So it should be, you know, fairly easy to knock out some pretty big chunks with some uh, find replace type uh, actions. So um, I do think there are a couple of options for different ways we can do that. So that's why I've uh, made a note down in the weeds to discuss that a bit more. Um, I uh, also was working on trying to resolve an issue in uh, bitmap tools boundary fill, uh, which was a function that I implemented. Uh, it was, it, it takes a while to work, especially if you use it on a relatively large section of a bitmap. Uh, and it was kind of uh, causing the USB to get locked out essentially, or, or become unresponsive. It would not react to control C's and um, it kind of seemed like it was frozen or hung while it was doing its work. Um, which could take it several seconds sometimes, so it felt pretty broken. Um, so I've got a PR in now for uh, trying to wrap that up, but it does still need some work. Um, uh, the other thing I've got uh, this week is for the latter part of this week, I will be out on vacation, so there won't be any deep dive stream or Saturday morning stream uh, from me this week, and you probably won't see too much from me in the GitHub, uh, excuse me, in the uh, Discord after the next couple of days. Uh, Next up, I will send it over to Dan for status updates. OK, thanks. So uh, last Tuesday, I released uh, CircuitPython 8.1.0 beta 0. Uh, that has the animated GIF and other stuff in it. 
Um, then we notice this bug about long frame delays on animated GIFs, so there'll be a fix in beta 1, which could be relatively soon. Uh, I try not to have, go too long between betas because it's just there's an enormous accumulation of stuff sometimes. It's hard to keep track of. Uh, I mentioned I fixed uh, some socket code um, that will go into the 80 uh, X release chain because it breaks um, uh, web workflow and it would be nice to get that fix in to the stable release. So I'll probably do an 804 release soon. Uh, we'll have that and maybe if there are a couple other things to go in there, I'll put We'll put those in too. Um, and otherwise, I'm just catching up on. There is still a whole bunch of um, open issues and PRs which we can work on. And I also, uh, in the internal meeting that we had before this, uh, there are some other interesting projects that I might start working on as well. But we have a lot of things to fix uh, for eight for eight XX in the future anyway. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dan. Uh, next up is DJ Devin Three. Thank you. I've been pretty busy this week. Uh, spent a couple hours iterating through different configurations to figure out how to almost completely remove the pop and click from the Adafruit I2S sound modules. Uh, and there's multiple that have the same kind of issue. Uh, the modules have either no capacitor or an insufficient one that introduces a very loud pop when a sound begins or ends, as most of you are well aware that have ever, ever used one. This is easily remedied with a large 1000 microfarad coupling capacitor across the positive and negative speaker outputs. It's very similar to the way Adafruit recommends adding a capacitor at the beginning of any long NeoPixel strip. Tried adding up to three capacitors with no effect. At, at some point, there's a law of diminishing return. Uh, the 1000 UF works best with the three watt class D amplifiers. It's just a matter of you know the capacity. Adding a 100K resistor um, is recommended in the learn guide as well for bridging gain and VN, which also helps it lower, it lowers the initial gain. You, it's a gain selectable, but it, there's like different pins. So it's like a weird jumper method. Um, it's better to amplify a three decibel signal than a 12 decibel signal that's at or near max peak signal. Uh, the pop from the initial current inrush is now practically imperceptible and will make all audio projects much more enjoyable to experiment with. Uh, my male boombox audio clarity is now much improved because of this at high amplification levels. Adafruit warns not to use the three watt I2S amplifier as a preamp, but I did find a way to do it and solve two design flaws in the process. Uh, no more popping and clicking. Sunday, I pushed a minor PR for the TR Cowbell simple test code. So it's just a very basic, still no MIDI stuff or anything. It's just I needed to, I needed to get that done. Um, there are separate examples for those who are using it with or without a display. The default code now assumes you've done the bodge fix as the starting point. If you haven't done the bodge fix yet, please do. Everyone will now be on the same page with their hardware. And I might have just gotten my first electronics freelance job thanks to my work on the seven segment social media tracker project um, that has like the seven different APIs all built into the into the one seven segment display. Um, the order is for 50 14 segment displays uh, showing the number of uh, online media API uh, that I have to code and hook into as well as the 3D printed enclosures. So all of that is like right up my alley. And all 50 devices will require Wi-Fi connectivity. And about the only point thing that I'm really worried about is just getting all the parts. That's it's an expensive project. Uh, but I did 3D print a basic enclosure, and as a, I already fired that off to the client, and looking good so far. So I'm really excited about that. And that's all I've got. Nice, congratulations on that. It's always a, a great step to uh, to achieve. Thanks, DJ Devin. Uh, next up is David Glauda, who's not present, so I will read theirs. Um, David says, fixing a cable to go from Stemma QT to Lolan similar but not equal connector. Uh, there's a link here to that. Um, testing one more time that the driver for that tiny screen works with CircuitPython. Uh, David will be off for two weeks, one week of skiing, as well as two days in Disneyland Paris. Uh, and David also writes, wondering if Scott wants to take over the deep dive spot for this Friday, since uh, I will be out, Tim will be out this week. Um, 
David won't be able to catch it live, but would watch the VOD later, if so. Uh, next up is G. Nevrov. Hello, everyone. Um, so the last couple of weeks, I've been working on um, adding async support to the audio stack and to sort of generally make it a bit more flexible. And so I've sort of reached a milestone with that now um, where I have a proof of concept app that will stream MP3s over the, the network and play them. And I'm just cleaning up the, the code for that. And um, I should publish a PR, a draft PR for that um, soon. Um, and I think we'll need to have like a discussion and a design review on what we think this new API for audio would look like. Um, moving on from that this week, um, so the audio code ended up not being fully async because the network code is not async. So this week I'm going to be looking into um, making async APIs of um, the socket API. And as part of that, I'm going to try to enable dynamic memory allocation in LWIP so that we don't have any um, static limits about the number of sockets that can be used. And that's it for me. Awesome. Thank you for the update, uh, Gene Everov. Next up is Jeff. Hello. Uh, well, first of all, I'm really excited to hear about uh, that work on the streaming MP3s. Thanks for doing that. Uh, anyway, as to my work, I published a couple of guides last week, an SNES mouse to USB HID guide, as well as the Flappy Featherwing product guide. Um, I've been playing with the OpenAI API running uh, on CircuitPython as well as on host computers. I've got two ideas I've been kicking around, one I'm calling Endless Zork, and the other that I uh, was thinking about this morning is uh, to make a story based on choices of emoji, and both of those are pretty fun, uh, but if I do a guide, it will probably be showing the endless Zork uh, as the idea. I made some changes to the Adafruit MCP2515 library, which is for a CAN bus um, interface chip. I need to retest that on hardware uh, so that we can merge it. There is a utility class. There are a pair of utility classes in the core canio.message and canio.remote transmission request. But that library, that module isn't necessarily on all devices, so Adafruit MCP2515 has its own copy of those classes. Um, if you accidentally mix the core class with the Adafruit MCP2515 library, it doesn't behave correctly. Um, and by this refactoring, the library will use the core classes if they are there, otherwise use its own implementation. Um, but by the time that PR was, was done, it was um, making a bunch of changes, also changing how the documentation builds, and so I just need to retest it. Anyway, uh, next up, I've started on implementing, implementing Rotary I.O. for the IMXRT, which would work on that new Feather M7. Um, it will use pin change interrupts and the same quadrature state machine as the RP2040, NRF, and SAMD. When uh, we broke, or when I had to stop working on that to come to meetings this morning, it was almost compiling. Next after that will be to set up my debugger situation. Um, the next thing on the IMX series will be adding I2S audio out. On the 1011, which is what's on the Metro M7, there is no SDIO support, so skipping that for now. Uh, later on, I may do that on the 1060 EVK. It's also supported on the TNC4, so we do eventually want it, but... Uh, it doesn't. It isn't needed for the metro, and then besides the OpenAI uh, endless Zork project, the other next project remains the Help keyboard, uh, and also that will finally test the Risk Five ultra low power coprocessor on the ESP thirty two S three, and that is enough to keep me busy and out of trouble. All right, thank you, Jeff. Uh, next up is Jose David, who's text only, so I'll read. Uh, Jose writes, uh, they worked on the uh, worked on a PR for a MPL 3115A2 issue, uh, worked on some PR reviews, 
and uh, non CircuitPython related, uh, refactored an old knitting pattern software from PyQt4. Uh, it was fun. Um, so thank you uh, to Jose for leaving those notes. And the uh, next up, I will send it over to Scott. I love that Jose David has the fun in quotes at the end of there too. Uh, for those of you who are not looking at the notes talk. Um, so for me, I'm deep in the IMX RT weeds um, around interrupts and what we can run when we're doing flash operations and not and things like that. So uh, I'm looking at memory layout and performance um, and hopefully hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll come up with some changes that will make it more reliable. Um, Dan saw some of this uh, with his uh, prototype Metro M7, um, like USB unreliability. Um, we're not doing any interrupt servicing during flash erases, which can be a multi tens of milliseconds sort of operation, which could is probably the culprit, honestly. Um, so I'm looking at making it so that we can run interrupts during flash operations, which will be good. Um, I was also looking into doing full fun function tracing and um, was having some reliability issues there um, that I kind of got me to this place. So uh, I'm deep in the IMX we RT weeds. Hopefully that'll make it uh, more reliable in the end and I'll certainly have a better understanding of it. Like I didn't know what a veneer function was, um, but basically the ARM 32-bit thumb instruction set can't jump kind of through the whole memory space. So uh, that matters if, if there's code that's in flash that needs to call code that's in RAM. Like those, those places are too far away from each other. Um, and so they use these veneer functions, which are interesting, um, in order to go from one place to another. They're also known as trampoline functions. Uh, but this is the first ex I've experienced that. So, uh, yeah, learning a lot. <laughs> and hopefully at the end of it, we'll get more reliable uh, CircuitPython on the IMXRT. So if you did order some of those new Metro M7s, please let us know how it's working. All right. Thank you, Scott. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and I am tempted to take your slot on Friday. All right. I'll say... <laughs> at least for an hour. Stay tuned, uh, stay tuned to Discord then probably for more... Uh... Notes yeah, and, and I'll put a thing on the blog. But I've been thinking about starting this stream again, so uh, you taking a break and me filling in for you is, is a good opportunity for that. Perfect. All right. So that wraps up the status updates, which is going to get us to the next and final section of the meeting, which is in the weeds. Uh, in the Weeds is an opportunity for more long-form discussions that either come out of status updates or that folks have identified ahead of time. If you do have any In the Weeds topics, please go ahead and add those uh, as soon as you can down to the bottom of the notes doc. There is one in there, um, but that is it for now. So if you have something else you wanted to discuss, please uh, throw that in. Uh, the one that is in there is one that I put in, uh, and I will say a late hug report. I don't know who it was, but somebody added some additional information to this. Thank you for that. Um, this is about updating examples for the new Display.io API, uh, in particular changing over the like display.show to being display.root group and then setting it equal to something as a property. Um, the main questions I have that I wanted to get uh, insight from the larger team on was, do we want to keep the uh, old version in the code uh, commented out uh, or vice versa? Do we want to keep it as the old version and maybe leave the new version commented out for now? Uh, and if we do want to keep uh, both versions old and new, um, is there any preference on sort of the comments that go along with it? I have uh, linked a PR here where I took a kind of first stab at this in the uh, learn guide repo, uh, specifically the display IO learn guide, which I think makes sense as kind of the first place um, to change. Um, but I didn't want to go any farther before I got feedback on on that sort of stuff. So um, I, I would say something about how I think about this for release staging that we still the 80 release is really new. And so I wouldn't like we're still building the 7x bundles, for instance, and we do refer people back to 7x when they find regressions in eight. And I would like I, I don't I don't feel like 
even though seven is not up on circuitpython.org directly, it's still a reliable release that people might want to use in some circumstances. So I wouldn't change it in the examples yet. Okay. I mean, it certainly changed it by the time we got to nine. Okay. And in general, this kind of change we've made months after a release was stable. And in that case, I would say just change it. Don't include the old code. Okay. Um, because at that point, we would expect if it breaks, people we just tell people they should upgrade. Okay. Otherwise, you end up having to make the change twice because we don't want to leave. Correct. Um, sort of deprecated code in 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 the in the learn guides. I mean, you could check, you could do a try or something, but it seems kind of silly because uh, this is a really common thing to do. So I would say just leave it alone for okay. now, and then you know, in the springtime or yes. something like that, we yep. would we would change all these once, and that would be that would be good enough. And that at that point, like we might stop building. The 7x bundles, for instance, I would I would think it would be more in line with that. Uh, I don't know, Space Scott, you have a different you have a different uh, viewpoint. I agree. I agree with you. Okay. Yeah, like let's just wait till we actually think Edo is stable, and then and we're when we're clearly turned the corner and are working on nine. Uh, right. That's when we can turn the bundle off and then then move all everything over. All right. Sounds good to me. Um, and I have not seen any other topics pop up, so I'm going to assume nobody else has got anything else for In the Weeds. Uh, so I will bring us to the wrap-up. Timestamp for that. This has been the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for March 6th, 2023. Thank you to everyone who participated. Uh, as a reminder, if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. Uh, the video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be made available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. You can visit uh, adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to that. The next meeting, uh, I did not actually look at the calendar, but I believe the next meeting is Monday at the usual time, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong there in the chat, uh, pretty please, and thank you. Um, the meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. Uh, you do need to be uh, you need to have the CircuitPythonistas role if you want to talk, and the other upside of that role is you'll get notified of any upcoming changes to the meeting. Uh, we'll ping that role with any changes. So uh, thank you to everyone who was here, and we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everybody.